Forget gurus. Forget anyone claiming to be an online business expert without going through the challenges of entrepreneurship themselves. The Real Money, Real Business podcast is here to prove the best insights in online business comes from your fellow online business builders. We dig into stories of entrepreneurs selling their business on the Empire Flippers marketplace so that you can learn how they made their business profitable, how they overcame obstacles, and what lessons they learned in their online journey. If you want to take your business and your knowledge to the next level, you've come to the right podcast. Let's get started. Hey, everyone. Sarah here with another great business to discuss on this episode of the Real Money, Real Business podcast. Today's guest is Luke, and he is selling his Amazon FBA, e-commerce, subscription, FBM, and B2B business on the Empire Flippers Marketplace. Welcome to the show, Luke. How are you doing today? I'm doing great, Sarah. Thanks for having me. Yeah, it's good to have you here. I'm really looking forward to talking a bit more about your business. Before we dive in, let's go over a brief summary of the business. This is an Amazon FBA, e-commerce, subscription, FBM, and B2B business in the health and personal care niches created in April 2018. The average monthly revenue of this business is $52,142, and it has an average of $18,342 per month in net profit, and that is based on an eight-month pricing period. Included in the sale of the business are 19 SKUs, domain and all-site content files, trademark, email list, social media accounts of Facebook and Instagram, operational SOPs, and a full business plan for future growth. For everyone listening, you can visit empireflippers.com slash marketplace and search for listing number 46994 to learn more about the business or place a refundable deposit to start your due diligence if you're interested in purchasing. Now that I've given a general overview of the business, let's dig in to the interview. So start me off, you know, you've got a pretty interesting niche and a really cool backstory about this business. So tell me a little bit about why you chose this niche that you're working in. Yeah, great question, sir. I mean, you know, we went almost into a real micro niche, I guess. And we picked this niche in particular because it will just never die. It's not a trend. They're replenishable products that people will always need every two to three months. And what we've done is inject a sustainable approach to the product. And we've differentiated enough to make us really a market leader in that niche. And that has been responsible for really high volume sales and quite fast success as well. The upward trend is really doing well. And we're looking forward to seeing what it's going to do in 2020. Absolutely. So you've got this rapidly growing business. It is taking off and poised for growth in 2020. But take me back. How did you come up with the idea to start this business? And tell me a little bit about your just your background in building running online businesses. Yeah, so I mean, it all starts with training and learning from the best. That's the way I've approached everything in anything I've ever done business-wise and and personal life as well. You know, I would say I think maybe four or five online business courses, three of which uh, were specific to really, you know, dominating on Amazon. Um, I think everyone listening would probably be aware of the major courses that, you know, you can do in Amazon. But I honed in on some very specific tactics learning properly how to differentiate and rank and really keeping tabs on the Amazon algorithm as well to ensure, you know, continual success and just the evaluating the competitors and all the rest of it is, you know, really all the training that went into that has really helped with the growth. So yeah, a lot of experience now in building this. And I think when it gets passed over, you know, the new owner will really see that there's been no stone left unturned. You know, it's a meticulously constructed brand and likewise goes with everything attached to it, including, you know, all the operating procedures and the virtual assistants that execute everything day to day. So, yeah, it's a great business to buy for sure. Hmm, that's a great answer. You know, back me off. Tell me about the wholesaling opportunities that you have and the new opportunities that are unfolding right now. Yeah, great question. So I believe there's a huge monetization opportunity in wholesale and retail. We've only just started this off the back of completely organic inquiries with wholesalers coming to us and even retailers off the back of the fact that we are, you know, completely dominating our niche on Amazon. Our products have obviously been spotted on there. And then an inquiry goes into the website, hey, can we stock your products? So we haven't even done any paid advertising yet or built out the strategy properly for getting the products into retail and wholesale. And we're still generating revenue. One of the most exciting 
inquiries of late has been from a distributor in Northern Ireland, it has around 250 stores on their books, and it's looking like we'll be able to do a deal with those guys. But we'll see, you know, and the first part of 2020 for us is really building out this wholesale approach, you know, with a wholesale catalog, very different to Amazon, but, you know, we've got the supplier, we've got the products, we're just slightly changing the packaging to suit for retail with some nice touches like shelf ready packs, where a retailer can receive the product, rip the top of the box off and it slides straight on the shelf. So you make it very easy for the retailer, which is obviously attractive for them to want to stock your products, saves them time in store. Yeah, lots happening with that. I mean, where does the growth end? There's so many opportunities now to double, triple, quadruple the revenue just with the existing products. Amazon is, you know, we kind of feel like Amazon UK has been dominated with the products we have. We do have more products, some of which are on the ocean as we speak. As I said before, we'll just keep building this brand. It's a great brand. And I want to see it succeed for sure. Very cool. You know, it's amazing how well diversified this business is and, you know, just how many great monetization options you have. Now, I know you said earlier that you're mainly FBA. And I'm always very curious to hear about, you know, why did you choose FBA? And, you know, from your perspective, why do you think it is a great business model for those interested in online business? Yeah, one word, leverage. You know, Amazon really have you know, given opportunities to a lot of, you know, people out there to build businesses fast. And when we saw the opportunity to leverage the Amazon services, in this case, FBA, you know, fulfillment by Amazon, we knew we couldn't move the thousands of products we're selling every single month by hand. Trust me, we've tried, (laughs) you know, in previous ventures. And when this came along and I saw it, I wanted to know everything about FBA. We did extensive training to really understand the nuances of how the whole thing works, including the you know Amazon as a platform. And yeah, so FBA is fantastic. If you want to start or buy, it means you can focus on strategy and growth, then you need to hand everything over to someone else to do all the fulfillment, all the customer service and all of that kind of stuff. And that's really what Amazon provide. And if you can sort of bolt on your own side of it, like there's some virtual assistants dealing with the more sort of detailed customer service, then you really are onto a winner. And that's what we've done. We've got, you know, full-time virtual assistant who basically runs the business all day for us. And I just check in 15 minutes a day. So it's at a good position now, for sure, for a new buyer. Okay, great. Well, you know, that leads me into my next question, which is, you know, why are you selling this business instead of keeping it and growing it? Yeah, great question. And, you know, to be completely honest with you, it's a tough one. It was tough to decide to sell because I have really enjoyed building this brand. But, you know, I've got a young family. I've a five-year-old, three-year-old, and a one-year-old. And we've always wanted to build a farm. And I also wanted to look at other business-to-business opportunities in the UK. So, honestly, the sale of this will really facilitate the next stage in life for my family. I know that's probably a different answer to uh, what people might be used to. The standard answer seems to be I'm seeking other business opportunities, but mine's quite specific. And I'll just be honest about it. The money from the sale, you know, will help us build out our new life as a family and I can have a bit of family time for a bit before I focus on my new business ventures in the UK. Yeah, absolutely. No, you're not alone in that. We do get some people come through and, you know, they want to move on to that next chapter that's not always business oriented and, you know, does always happen to be usually family. So looking forward to seeing how it plays out for you. I hope you get your farm. That's awesome. So really curious to hear a little bit about your past. You know, it sounds like you are very well experienced in this industry. You know, is there anything you learned from this business that you'd apply to, say, future sites or businesses? What did you learn from building this that just seemed to really work for you? Yeah, this is an easy one for me. Customer obsession. We provide real life customer service. So there's very, very personal touches with all the templates that will be handed over to the new buyer. Any question we've ever been asked by you know, the hundreds of thousands of customers we've had, had a real life answer formulated, not generic. It's not, you know, sorry to hear you had an issue. We'll just supply a refund. We want to touch customers, you know, and we want them to really feel like they've bought into the correct brand. And, you know, we get loads of great feedback every single day. And I would say that it's our customer obsession policy, you know, our in-house policy, which is, look, Let's just make sure they have a fantastic experience, even reading a message from us. 
and we're quite human about our approach with things you know at the end of the day the niche is kind of reflects that aspect and and people buying our products are trying to do something good for the planet because of our sustainable and eco-friendly approach and i think when you talk to them like that and you almost congratulate them on their purchase they become your friend for a few minutes you know while you're talking to them online and it's uh, it's nice to see everybody so happy buying our products and generally speaking we don't really get complaints which is really nice that's excellent. I definitely think that is a good advice for everyone listening. Of course, you know, we always want to round out and get all sides of the story here. So, you know, was there anything you tried that say didn't work? Yeah, absolutely. I think if anybody told you that everything works all the time, I would say they're probably a bit deluded. For us, when I launched the first product, I didn't differentiate enough. I think I was a little bit too similar to some of my competitors. And I thought my brand name, brand ethos and all this would be enough, but wasn't. And it took me a while to rank initially. And then I thought, you know what, let's just take a step back. You know, if you want to be a market leader here, you need to work out exactly, you know, your customer avatar and what are they looking for when they search for your, you know, your the main keywords. So we took a step back about, you know, two or three months in. And I decided I was going to bundle the item with two more products to create a three product bundle. It was quite difficult to do that. It was quite difficult to find suppliers to make the specific bits. And then also to streamline the whole process and have the whole thing put together at source with three factories communicating with one another was the next challenge. We managed to do it. And what we did is we just took it that little bit further whereby no other competitor really could be bothered to do that. And I think that is evident when you look at the listings, you can see it's whilst it is the same product as other people, we've got those extras in there that, you know, customers want, they want when they see it, then it doesn't look like a token add on. It looks like part of the pack, you know, so they haven't got to go and purchase three separate products. They purchase ours and they get all of them. Yeah, I would say not differentiating fast enough was our mistake at the start. But yeah, as I say, we've done that now and I feel like it's really propelled our success forwards. Well, you know, and you might have, you know, answered my next question in some way, but I will open up the floor just in case you have anything to add. You know, is there any advice that you would give to our listeners, you know, something that you would wish you'd known when you had started? Yeah, definitely. Develop the best product that you can from day one. And it might be that bit of extra work and you might be itching to release a product, but just hang back a bit and properly think about almost future proof. You can't completely future proof your products, but you can certainly look forwards and think, okay, if I do this now, this is really going to stave off any competition for a good period of time. And as I say, we didn't do that at the start. So we were immediately in the mix of having to compete with similar products. But when we stepped back, we differentiated, we bundled our pack together, we almost future-proofed ourselves, which made us the market leaders instantly across you know, our three top selling SKUs. You know, well, tell me a little bit about your process for getting inventory to Amazon. Okay, yeah. So, I mean, we've got you know, a lot of product that moves. Our last import was a full container, and we have an XLM who handles everything for us you know at source where the products are made all the way through to our 3pl our third party logistics warehouse which is in the center of the uk now we keep the stock there then we have the va drip feed stock into fba so you know i think everybody's looking for a hands-off opportunity and that's certainly what we've created we don't hold any stock at all and it's really you know it's quite a smooth process from where the products are made all the way through to where they're stored and distributed from Great. You know, moving on to traffic, let's talk a little bit about that. So where does the majority of your traffic come from? And tell me a little bit about what you're doing currently in terms of marketing. Yeah, good question. So this is actually another opportunity for the new owner. I would say 98% of our sales are organic. They've searched for either the main keywords or the actual brand name which is now getting its own organic searches due to the sheer volume of products that have been sold since starting the business. People are now actually just searching for the brand name, which is pretty cool. So, you know, in terms of our traffic, it's somebody punches in a keyword on Amazon, 
our rank is, for example, if I just, you know, use two of the SKUs for a major keyword, those two SKUs will pop up organic position one, organic position two. And that's about, I would say, 90% of the time. As everybody knows, you know, occasionally the algorithm might change for a day and you might pop go down to position three and four. The next day you're back up to position one and two. So we're quite fortunate to have really held those top spots for a long time now, over a year, I would say, we're very embedded in the algorithm. And, you know, that's reflected with these organic searches. So our sales come from organic means. We do run some brand banners in the top of the Amazon search, some brand advertising, because obviously we're part of the brand registry system on Amazon, which gives us access to use that. And that has a really great ACOS, which I'm sure the listeners know, but average cost of sale, so basically, we're making money on the ads, which is great. And that they've been running for probably a couple months now. We just let that tick along in the background because there's not much to do with it. It sort of runs itself. In terms of other traffic, the opportunities are kind of endless. We haven't driven any traffic from social media because really we looked at cost of it and thought, we don't really need it at this point. We also looked at the overall volume of sales in our niche and the fact that we were capturing probably one in four of all sales would just be spending money if we start paying for more traffic outside of Amazon. So yeah, bit of a long-winded answer, Sarah, sorry, but most of our sales are organic on Amazon. What are you currently doing in terms of marketing? Yeah, in terms of marketing, you know, really most of our sales are organic. We do have an email list around about a thousand subscribers that's growing every day and yeah i mean they certainly being quite honest they could be contacted more (laughs) we've really utilized the list to help us launch new SKUs. you know just keeping our commitment to people who have signed up to say hey you're part of our eco deal club and you'll get one special offer for you know every new product that we release and yeah obviously we've only released a certain amount of products so they've only had a certain amount of offers going forwards this email list could actually be utilized, you know, during special holiday periods, you know, Black Friday, Cyber Monday, you've got like World Environment Day, Earth Day, like all these, you know, sort of holidays that tie in with what our niche is about and what our sustainable products represent. So there's definitely a huge opportunity to utilize that list more in terms of marketing. And there's a chance to, you know, cross everything and make everything talk to each other as well, like social media could feed the list from another side instead of us at the minute people are signing up either through our website or literally when they purchase the product there's a prompt you know on the packaging to sign up so that's the way they're signing up at the moment but you could grow that list a lot bigger if you know execute a new strategy to build it like using social media for example or a funnel through some google ads or something so yeah hopefully that's answered your question sarah Yeah, well, you know, it's a great answer. In a way, you're getting to my next question, but I'm sure you have more to add on it. I wanted to speak about opportunities. So, you know, if you were to keep this business, what are some ways that you would try to grow it? Okay, great question. So it's exactly what we're focusing on now. With very little effort, we're going to be able to soon send out a wholesale catalog of our SKUs. And there's the first stop will be distributors. And then there's also the chance to get a major retail deal. As mentioned prior, you know, these are replenishable products used by every human being on the planet, which is, you know, we've got a big market here and it's ripe for retail. Admittedly, there's no experience my end in retail and that has it's not slowed it down, but I would suggest any, you know, someone might want to bring a third party person on to help with them in a retail venture wholesale a little bit easier so that's the first opportunity we're focusing on the next obvious ones the other amazon platforms amazon usa is essential the next buyer takes that market on from the last look on the tools that we've got there's about uh, three times or maybe four times the demand in the us compared to the uk so You know, our uh, calculations said that even if we sat mid-page on an organic search in the States, or maybe we picked some slightly lower searched keywords to rank for, we could probably still double the monthly revenue by focusing on the US. We haven't done that yet because, yeah, obvious reasons, you know, we're building it as it comes. You can't do every strategy at the same time. 
And I think it's important to really hone in on one at a time, master it, then go and stabilize it and then get to the next strategy. So that's what we've done. You know, we honed in on the UK and dominating the UK. We know that market inside out now. We feel fairly untouchable is quite a strong word to use, but, you know, any buyer that inquires will see that, I think. The next step is let's do the same thing with wholesale or USA or EU. We did start with the EU and really we've seen some uptake in Spain. We haven't pushed it too much. The same in Italy, but we're just going to hang back a little bit while we you know, wait for some more stock before pushing through Europe and the States. Other opportunities. I mean, where do I stop? I think I mentioned we've got more SKUs in a container on the ocean at the moment as we speak. And they're SKUs that will be suitable for Amazon and also retail, so specific retail packaging. So that's quite exciting. And that forms part of our, I think you mentioned at the start of the call, Sarah, the business plan going forwards. As I say, we've done this all properly. So there's a list of products that are suitable to attach to the brand going forwards. And then again, building on to more opportunities, you can then use those SKUs on our website and really start to push the website. Now, this is where if you've got someone who's got a bit more, you know, cross internet marketing experience, maybe with social media and Google and up sales, you could start to monetize the website a bit more. At the moment, the website just does complete and utter organic sales. Um, we still do, you know, I'm very surprised actually, we still do quite well for something that has no work, you know, attached to it, it makes money every single month. You know, it's not too bad at all. So there's a monetization opportunity there. And then obviously there's, I mean, I could go on and on, there's more business to business opportunities as well. So what the next stage takes, Sarah, is it takes the next business owner to really say, hey, which one do I want to take on for the new growth? You know, a buyer from the US might say, hey, this is going to be so easy for me to roll out in the States. A buyer from Europe might say, hey, I'm going to focus on you know, Spain and Italy a bit more, which probably has about half the demand of the UK or an expert in Shopify sites or just general marketing on the internet, whether social media or Google based might say, hey, I'm going to monetize Shopify first. So I think we're very fortunate to be in this position where we have this next stage of growth about to occur. And it's for that new buyer to come in and really dominate that area. So yeah, exciting times. This is really exciting, all the sort of marketing opportunities you have. But Luke, you also have this really unique opportunity to build a community. Can you tell me a little bit about how you are currently building community and what you think the potential is for there? Yeah, I mean, it's very much in the early stages of creating a social media community and and an email list. A lot of our stuff has been very organic. We have around, I believe, 400 or you know, people following our page on Facebook. And then I think there's about 800 on Instagram. We don't do enough content on these channels, but we do interact with customers who contact us or tag us. And again, this is all handled by the VA. If, you know, the next buyer, you know, wants to develop some content for social media, I think you're going to see a lot more interaction and you're going to be able to build the community out further. At the minute, you know, as I mentioned there, you've got over a thousand I call them raving fans because they're the people that have sought out your brand and they want to connect with you on social media. So, you know, that's really important. And I think the sky's the limit, really, when developing, you know, the community on Facebook and Instagram. And again, that could feed into our email list. We have, a, you know, around about a thousand, it might be a thousand and fifty or so now subscribers who, again, have, you know, bought our product most of the time and actually read the packaging and gone, hey, I want to sign up to this brand. This email list could definitely be monetized more than it is at the moment. We don't, you know, really hassle people on the list very often. There's a lot of, you know, holidays throughout the year where they're not getting contact. For example, there's a lot of sustainable holidays like Plastic Free July, World Environment Day, Earth Day, all these different days which we can find, you know, a connection with with our products in our niche. So, yeah, there's a lot of opportunity to build a really passionate community there or build on what is already a passionate community, you know, and certainly grow that. And I think someone with the skills going forwards could really, you know, monetize that side of the business, which is quite exciting. Yeah, it's incredibly exciting. Like you said, you have all these options for buyers. So, yeah, you're in a great position. Now, of course, this is always to make sure that we're covering all sides of the story here. You know, what would you say might be the biggest risks with a business that a buyer should be aware of? 
Yeah, good question. The biggest risk, I believe, in almost anything in life, you know, is not researching what you're doing enough. So in this case, the biggest risk to me was not researching the niche or the competition enough. And also, you know, not researching enough. So you have a good enough USP to just differentiate yourself from other sellers out there, from other brands. So that's the biggest risk for new SKUs that any you know buyer of this brand, I would say, just take your time and just really understand the niche we're in properly. Okay. And that's where I can assist happily. I've become, you know, obviously an expert in the niche. I know it's a It can be a slightly complicated niche to understand. There's a lot of specialist knowledge that's been developed over the last period. And what you get from me is you get it explained in a very easy way. You won't have to fight through the noise of, you know, other sellers saying certain things about their products that maybe aren't true. What you've got with us is you've got, you know, I feel like really, really well constructed listing on Amazon in particular and the correct information associated with the products. So, yeah, going forwards with any products a new buyer might want to release, I would just say just hang back a sec. Make sure you understand the niche properly. Make sure you understand the competition properly. And before releasing that product, let's just make sure we're differentiating enough and then let's go for it. So you can mitigate the risk fairly easily, I would say. Yeah, absolutely. Well, you know, earlier you had mentioned that you have a VA that is helping basically run to the day to day of the business. So I'll open up this question. I know you've answered it in some way, just in case you have anything else you want to add. Just tell me a little bit more about, you know, the type of work that you do on this business for maintenance and maybe the type of work that a buyer could expect taking on this business. Okay, so I mean, any buyer taking this on would need to familiarize themselves with the systems we've set up really streamlined now. It's fantastic, actually. It's uh, been a big relief to develop. I don't know how many standard operating procedures we've got now, but it must be over 70 or something. It could be towards 80 or 90, because actually now our full-time virtual assistant actually knows how to write the procedures herself, which is great. So if we identify something that has been asked by a customer or is happening in the business that does not have a manual, a go-to operating procedure for, the VA now knows how to create that procedure. So that was a, you know, another fantastic time saver once, you know, our VA learned that. But yeah, so day to day, really, I just check in and say good morning to the virtual assistant. I do my own checks of my list of the listings. That's just something I personally like to do. We do have operating procedures for that. But in our workflow software that we use, I actually assign that task to me. It's one that I just have I've wanted to hold on to personally because I kind of enjoy waking up and checking the listings and seeing if there's any new competitors, seeing what they're saying, seeing what the pricing's doing. And that just enables me to feel good day to day. So that takes me about 10 to 15 minutes. And as I say, checking with the VA as a list, you know, they've all got assigned dates and times and she clicks done and it reassigns for the next day or the next week, depending on the style of task that it is. And then really, if there's any additional issues she may encounter throughout the day, we have, you know, a piece of software. She'll just send me an instant message and I'll jump to it, give a little bit of advice or say, hey, maybe we need to develop a new operating procedure for that. And just be there as, you know, a manager, really, if she needs me. But really, all in all, we've got this down to, I would say, three to four, on occasion, five hours a week on the current business that's for sale. All the new opportunities obviously would require extra work. So, for example, when I was developing the retail-friendly packaging for one of the SKUs that's on the water at the moment, that was additional work. So, you know, I'd sit down with a designer and, you know, all the stuff that's attached to that. But if you wanted to just take on what exists now and know the workload attached to that, I would say three to five hours a week for sure. And it's uh, it's, it's very automated and all of the workflows, everything would be passed on uh, to the buyer. And I think they'll like it. It's, uh, It's had a lot of thought put into it. So yeah. That's awesome. Very cool that you've been able to systemize everything and, you know, make things easier for the next buyer. You know, that brings me into my next question. You know, I'm curious, you know, would you say there are any, say, skills or requirements for someone not familiar with this niche or business model? The skills and requirement, the requirement of any, you know, savvy investor would be to really learn what they're buying 
And I think all listeners listening to this right now know that. And I'm happy to answer any questions you know people have at all because I genuinely feel this is a fantastic brand to buy. Specific skills, I mean, it would definitely help to understand the basics of the Amazon algorithm as a starting point. If you're looking to build, you know, if you're looking to have new SKUs and build new listings on Amazon, you will need some specific knowledge surrounding building the listings because there's obviously back-end keywords and stuff you have to input. Anyone with no experience on Amazon would go, I don't know how to do that. But you can leverage, again, there's some fantastic freelancers out there that can do that. It's not something we've trained our VA on because, again, that's just something I quite enjoy doing, building the listings. But there's a lot of people out there that can build decent listings for you. So if you did want to have some specific knowledge coming into this sale, I would say a bit of experience with understanding the Amazon algorithm and also building listings out. Besides that, if you're happy to sub these jobs out, you could probably get away with coming in fresh, I would say. And I can teach the new buyer enough basics to get them, you know, hitting the ground running. So, yeah. Okay. Well, you know, to piggyback off of what you just said there, I know you said you're available for questions and you're willing to help the buyers, but, you know, how much support are you offering buyers? I don't know if you have a particular time frame in mind or something like that. Yeah, I think, um, you know, obviously – It's important for me to see the brand continue to succeed. And I'm happy to pass on the knowledge needed to the new buyer for that. In terms of support going forwards, you know, I can be available, you know, for set times every day that we would agree between myself and the buyer. And I would say 30 days is loads of time to get to grips on, you know, with this brand and this business. If there is additional time needed, you know, it's something we could certainly talk about sorting out but it obviously depends on the buyer as well there might be you know an amazon buyer just say hey i know what i'm doing they might not need the support of 30 days but then there might be someone who you know aware sort of online businesses and that's that might be where we sort of speak between us and i give a little bit of additional help i think the main thing for me is i want the buyer to be happy with what they're buying so i'm not really a hard and fast like oh it's 20 days maximum that's it and then you'll never hear from me again i'm not like that I really want to see this person take this on and be really happy with what they've bought. That'll make me happy. So, yeah, I know that's a a bit of a roundabout answer, Sarah, but yeah, yeah, that's kind of what I feel. No, it's a great answer. And I think it's good for people to know that, you know, you are just as invested in the success moving forward with the buyer as you were when you had the business yourself. So it's good to know. I think it's good for people to hear. Well, just rounding up the last few questions here, would you commit to a non-compete? Yeah, yeah, of course. I think the last thing any buyer wants is the seller continuing to stay selling the similar products just doesn't really make any logical sense so of course um you know happy to commit to a non-compete i think goes without saying yeah no problem at all awesome you know earlier right in the beginning of the interview you had mentioned using different i guess online tools courses etc to learn more about building your business you know i'm curious would you be willing to share you know any of the say software tools or communities that you use to help you learn and and run this business yeah if i'm able to say them on this interview now i'd be happy to name the companies that i've dealt with yeah sure yeah yeah software the suite of tools that we've used is helium 10 again i would imagine 80 percent of listeners have probably heard of that suite of tools anyway we also because we're based in the uk helium 10 has a chrome extension that doesn't work in the uk or it doesn't work that well that's for sure so we actually choose to use jungle scout the jungle scout chrome extension but the rest of the tools again i'm not going to there's about 12 tools inside the helium 10 suite we use all of them very effectively in terms of communities that helped out at the start of running the business, well, I started with ASM. People may have heard of that. I've also done another sort of different sort of strategy-based course for on Amazon, which was, which I chose not to go that strategy, but it still taught me a lot of things about the marketplace of Amazon. And then I actually went on to develop more sort of higher-end strategy-based skills with uh, Rapid Crush. And Ben Cummings, Search Find Buy, Jason Fladlin. I don't know if people have heard of those guys. So, yeah, there's a lot of money being spent on education, software, tools. We also use probably like, you know, every online seller, we use an automated email system to reach out to our buyers, which plugs into the Amazon platform. And when somebody purchases our product, we automatically email them. And, yeah, when it's dispatched, they get another email. 
And then about, you know, eight days later or so, they get another one saying, hey, how's your experience going? You know, if you fancy leaving a review, let us know. And I think that was actually one thing to good point to mention. Actually, once we really tuned our approach with this, we saw our reviews absolutely skyrocket. And the reviews we have on three best selling SKUs, really no other, you know, competitor comes close to the amount we've got and obviously the rating, which is another big, you know, indicator for any person looking to buy our product they see the reviews they see how highly they're rated and yeah that certainly helps them make purchase so yeah there's some essential tools there for sure yeah thank you for sharing i know our listeners they'll usually write in and ask questions about the tools and communities that sellers use so it's very good to have you share with our eager listeners you know i'm curious was there anything in particular maybe any one in particular that you know really just drove you and motivated you while having this business yeah, that's really easy for me. The difference we're making, you know, on the planet with the products that we're selling is huge. And there's some really great statistics, you know, that we can say to buyers, hey, we've combated it without getting too specific on this interview. Like we've combated X amount of non-sustainable products being bought with customers buying our sustainable version. And we're really now seeing customers are making a sustainable choice within our niche there's been non-sustainable opportunities sort of choice for years and years. And we're now saying, hey, look, why would you buy that when you can buy ours is better for the planet and it's just as effective as its non-sustainable counterpart. So the motivation for us is that, you know, every day we wake up, we're really happy that we're selling a product that doesn't damage the planet. That keeps motivated every day. And the other part of the motivation is when you see the communication come um, you know, through Seller Central or through email, through the website from really happy customers who have joined our crusade, I guess, like our eco-friendly crusade. And they're like, you know, your products are great. I'm so happy I've made the switch, your sustainable version. Can't believe I ever purchased the non-sustainable version. I'll be a repeat customer for sure. And we get messages like that every day. And I think that's something that made us think about the subscription side of the business that I don't think we've spoken about yet. And that's, you know, really got a big future in it as well. We were hand selected actually by Amazon to go on the subscribe and save program for our products. So no other product in our, no competitor, not one, has got the subscribe and save uh, function on their listings. So yeah, they whitelisted us basically. They called and said, hey, we want to select your products because you're doing excellent volume, you know, great account health and all the rest of it. And what we've seen is for that small 5% reduction in the sales price, customers are hitting subscribe and we're getting quite a few subscribers every single week. It's good for future projection for seeing what revenue is going to come. And I think you're going to see that snowball this year. You know, it's only been operational, I think, for about three months, but I think it's about 100. I can't remember what I wrote on the profile there, Sarah. Was it 100 subscribers a week we get roughly? Yeah, it was about 100 subscribers a week. Yeah, that's it. So we also have sort of done a slight bit of custom coding on the website um, to give us a subscription feature on the website. Like I said before, we haven't massively pushed the website, but the function is there nonetheless. And we do have a handful of subscribers through the website. And that's something that, you know, any new owner can start to push for sure. Absolutely. Well, you know, this is one of my favorite questions and going to be rounding out the interview here. Putting yourself in the shoes of a buyer, why do you think this is a business worth buying? This is really easy and natural for me to answer. This is, you know, this term gets brandished around all the time, turnkey business. Unfortunately, not all business are as, businesses are as turnkey as are made out sometimes. This one really is turnkey. You know, you've got all the operating procedures, you know, to hit the ground running should you want to even recruit more VAs. You've got a selection of products at the forefront of their niche, completely dominating most major keywords, or all major keywords, not all minor ones, but definitely all major. And whilst, you know, savvy buyers, you know, listening to this right now will see our multiple is a little bit higher than maybe some other businesses for sale. But there's a reason for that, you know. This has been thoroughly vetted by the Empire Flippers guys. And, you know, they've sat down and gone, hey, this is worth a higher multiple because of the amount of automation you've got built in and the amount of uh, future success that any new buyer of this business is likely to have. Um, you know, the amount of monetization going forwards 
for this brand is huge. Obviously, that new monetization will require some work. For the investment, you're going to get a business that is making you a significant amount of money every single month. And with some you know, very simple strategies, you can expand it quite quickly. So yeah, I think for any buyer, this is definitely a business worth buying. And yeah, I'd be happy to answer any more questions people might have about that. Yeah. I mean, like you said, it's a turnkey business with just loads of opportunity. Really excited to see how this plays out for you. That's great. Thanks for having me, Sarah. I appreciate it. Yeah. All right, everyone. Thanks for listening. To check out more details on this business or place a deposit, visit empireflippers.com slash marketplace and search for listing number 46994. If you're watching this on YouTube or Facebook, click the link in the description to go straight to the listing. By placing a refundable deposit, you'll be given everything you need to know about the business and can start your due diligence. Until next time.